What is a differential and how does it work? At first glance, they might seem really complicated and hard to understand, but at their foundation, differentials are actually extremely simple and critical to the function of every car, including small RC cars. When a car turns, the wheel on the outside of the turn traces a larger circle and therefore has to travel a farther distance and spin faster than the wheel on the inside of the turn. We can see this really clearly if we paint both wheels and trace out the path these wheels take during a turn on a sheet of paper. And if it's not immediately apparent which of these lines is longer, you can certainly see which is longer when I transcribe them into straight lines. In this case, the wheels are free to rotate at different rates because they're completely independent and not connected to one another. If you add a part that connects both wheels so that they must rotate together, and then you try to trace through the same turn we just took, either one or both wheels have to skid or slip or lose traction. So obviously that doesn't work for a car. Both wheels need to be able to rotate independently and at different speeds. So then how do we get power from the one motor to both wheels while allowing them to rotate at different speeds? So let's fasten a spoke on the inner end of each axle so that by turning the spokes, we can turn each wheel separately. Now, by adding a cross piece, we can turn the wheels in the same direction at the same rate of speed. Now, let's get something that holds that crossbar in place so that it can press against both spokes simultaneously. Notice that it's not locked to the axle so it can rotate independently. We can spin the wheels by rotating the support, and this is fine as long as both wheels are able to turn at the same speed. But let's see what happens when we try to go around a corner. In this arrangement, we can't drive one wheel faster than the other. If we stop one wheel, the other one's not moving. So what do we do now? Let's put this cross piece on a pivot so that it can swing in either direction. Now it can drive both wheels at the same speed, and because it pivots, it lets one wheel turn even when the other one's been stopped. But if you drive it too far, the cross piece loses contact with one of the spokes. We need more spokes in order to be able to maintain contact. Now, when we stop one wheel, the crossbars will continue to push the spokes of the free wheel around. And as long as both wheels are free to turn, the crossbars don't rotate on their pivot, and the wheels spin at the same speed. In order to reduce the jerky action and all the backlash caused by the wide spaces in between each of the spokes, we can make teeth that are in constant contact with one another, leaving no space for backlash between spokes. And the edges are cut so that they'll fit together more smoothly and silently. Another way to think about how these bevel gears are designed is to just imagine that they were cones and extended out along their angles to meet at a virtual point in the center. You can see the virtual point that these gears share and how their angles were defined. And another gear is added to share some of the work of driving the axles. Notice how when one wheel is stopped, power smoothly and seamlessly transfers to the one wheel that's free. Right now my fingers are driving this double crossbar and putting power into the wheels. Now, most cars aren't finger powered, and in this case I'm designing a differential for an RC car that has an electric motor and that is belt driven. So instead of this double crossbar that my finger is pushing on, it's replaced with this purple belt drive sprocket. And instead of just two spider gears, I've added two additional to total four. You can see how the four spider gears and both of the bevel gears orbit that virtual point in the center of the assembly. I like to think of that point as the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy that everything orbits around, but is not visible to the eye. The other components that we haven't considered yet are the bearings that allow everything to rotate with minimal friction. The bearings I'm using are really small and hard to see, so instead, to explain the design of these ball bearings a little bit more clearly, I'm gonna use this comically large one that I printed on my new Bamboo Lab H2S. The bearing's comprised of four main parts. There's the outer race, the inner race, the ball, and then the cage. The races are designed with channels that are just slightly larger than the diameter of the ball itself. The air gap between the inner race and the outer race is the true genius behind the design of a ball bearing. That gap is designed to be exactly half the diameter of the ball. The reason? So if you nudge the inner race over, there's exactly one ball diameter space to fit them into the race. Now to keep them from falling out again, 
All you have to do is align the balls around the circle so that they are equidistant from one another, which prevents the inner race from moving at all, up, down, left, or right. But what's to keep them equidistant from one another? Well, that's the role of the cage. The cage is designed with these passive snaps that when a little bit of force is applied, yields and allows the ball to snap into position, but has enough room for the ball to rotate freely once inside. These angled faces are created intentionally to help guide slightly out of position balls back into their cradle, just like a jock strap. By the way, if you want to download and print one of these yourself, the files are available on my website, curvelab.com. They're awesome little desk fidget spinners. And I've got some simple instructions and 3D print settings for you. Now, when these principles are applied to a high precision steel ball bearing, you get this liquidy smooth rotation. But I want to back up for a second because there's one more principle of differentials that we haven't covered yet. Not only does turning cause the left and right wheel to spin at different speeds, but it causes front and rear wheels to spin at different speeds. Let's look at the diameter of the circle that the rear axles trace in red versus the front axles in green. The front wheels are traveling a further distance, therefore spinning faster. So not only do we need a front and rear differential to split the power between left and right sides, we need a center differential to split the power between the front wheels and the rear wheels. The center differential is exactly the same as the front and rear in design, except the orange outputs output to a small belt drive pinion rather than the little cups that engage with the wheel axles on the front and rear differentials. The purple input sprocket takes power directly from the motor, then outputs it through these longer belts to the front and rear differentials. So put into practice, you can clearly see how a differential takes power from the motor and spreads it around the four wheels of the car to give it traction as it takes corners and on all different road surfaces. It's crazy how effective building this little demo model and actually turning it over in my hands was for really building an intuitive grasp of how a differential works from first principles. For me, I'm kind of a, a kinesthetic and visual learner, so just being able to rotate the gears in my hand and move the wheels around is how I build intuitive understandings of really complex concepts. So if you want to build this demo model yourself, all the files are available for download on my website, curvelab.com. So check it out and build one for yourself. Thanks for watching.